All right, everyone, good afternoon. It's Jalan with the Paradox Gaming Network, and today I'm doing another set of viewer request episodes. I'm going to talk about how to save a ship from hijacking, and then I'm going to talk about whether or not you should regrade your own gear, or if you should just buy it at Divine already. As always, here's all the information on how to get in touch with me. Nothing's really changed. Just remember, Discord is the easiest, Jalan hashtag 8446. This month's giveaway is, lo and behold, more squirrels. Ten squirrels we have to give away. Unfortunately, Tryon has tightened the belt a little bit and only given us ten codes, but they've included a whole lot more uh, creators in the program, so there's a ton of squirrels overall. So if you still don't have a squirrel, make sure you check out uh, the other creators that do good things. For my uh, giveaway, you will have to input your official Archage forum name into the Google form, which you'll find in the description. Please make sure you get your forum name right. Please make sure your uh, forum name can receive private messages. Last month I had to scramble to give some squirrel codes away before they expired because winners never got in touch with me. And uh, Archage 101 will be going live every Friday on uh, at 10 Pacific, 13 Eastern, and 1800 GMT. Now, like every good school, if it is a holiday or the observance of a holiday, I will be off that day. But uh, for the most part, I will try to stay live on the schedule. So today we're going to be talking about two topics. The first is hijacking ships, uh, the defensive side of that. I'm going to show you how to save your own ship from hijacking. And I'm going to show you how to help somebody else save their ship from hijacking. And then the other part of the video today is going to be whether or not we buy or regrade our own gear. So the first thing I want to say is that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And Benjamin Franklin said this, and it's absolutely right. There are a lot of little things you can do in preparation for your trade run that will help you not get hijacked. So the first thing I want to do is I want to jump in a game and I want to show you that right now, the way the harbor looks, the harbor is looking very much like somebody's out there scoping for ships. And the reason I can say this is both of the Anoans are pushed out to sea. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to actually summon my uh, fishing boat. And on my fishing boat, I have an upgraded radar. My radar is the... Uh, sea storm and i'm gonna click on here real quick and show you my radar is a 950 meter range the zephyrs on that come standard on your ship are 800 so when i sit in the harbor i can see all around these incoming islands now most people don't have this so what they do is they push these and no ones out to sea a little bit because then they can utilize the free radar and you can't blow up the Anoan. You can't attack it. I mean, you can pull it out to, uh, you can pull it out to past the Solus zone line, which will cause the Anoan to despawn. But what this tells me is that at some point lately, somebody was up on these Anoans using the radar. Now I can see that one is blank. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take myself over to the other one real quick okay so as we reach the top of the Anoan, uh, the reason why this is so important is people just get accustomed to these sitting out here and when I jump on this radar you can see that I have a huge radius I can see all the way past out uh, the prison island now if somebody had their own upgraded ship and they sat in harbor, they would be able to see just as far if they had my radar, but you're also going to know they're there. So when I first looked and showed you the harbor, the harbor looked pretty clear. There's not, there's no ships in there. It looks like there's no threats. So my advice is that if you know you're going to be running a lot of merchant ships, if your guild is going to be doing a lot of ships in, I would highly recommend pushing these out uh, so that they reset. And it's a relatively simple process to do that, uh, but you're going to know if somebody's out there hunting because as soon as you push these out, they're going to start to reposition them out into the open water. So I'm just going to speed fast forward while I do this.
And there you go, as you can see, when it got too far away, it instantly starts disintegrating. And that takes care of anyone having uh, radar for free. Now, there are going to be people who get ticked off at you because they do make their money uh, stealing. And that's fine. Uh, the whole purpose of this is to try to help you not get your ship stolen. So I'm not going to knock that out with the other one because I'm actually not going to be bringing in any packs. So as you can see though, as I pop in here, the Anowan does not immediately respawn. So you actually get rid of it for a little bit of time. So then let's go back to our slideshow presentation and talk about some of the other points. I don't know how many times I have stolen a merchant ship uh, that only has had like four packs taken off of it because you didn't have owner's mark up. Owner's mark should be up always, 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 always. Now, there's no excuse to not have owner's mark up because it sits for several minutes after you put owner's mark up. It will sit there. So I'm just going to pop a clipper and I don't know how many people say that I'm not right when I say it's... Uh, quite a long time but you pop you got your ship and owner's mark for a minute and 18 seconds counting down when I pop it it goes to uh, owner's mark when I jump off the boat it's a minute and 30 seconds you should be able to unload three to four packs per 90 seconds and if you're not able to unload three to four packs per 90 seconds that's what you need to work on you need to work on getting faster now, have an alt or a friend on the radar. Now, as you can see, I'm switching between, I'm switching between two clients, and and this doesn't work because you need to be able to see uh, instantly if a ship appears on your radar. If you're moving a merchant ship full of cargo, any ship on your radar, consider it a hostile ship. It doesn't matter if you know the guild tag. It doesn't matter if you think you're friendly with that guild. If as soon as you see a blip on your radar, you need to start taking measures to preserve your ship. Now, maybe you take those measures and it's all for nothing, or maybe you run into somebody in a guild tag who doesn't quite get with the program and who actually steals. Maybe you get with somebody in that guild tag who is just a spy for people who do who do green pirate or red pirate. As soon as you see it, you need to be able to move. Now, I'm not going to mess with my screen configuration right now, but what I highly recommend is that you set your screen up so that you can have another screen set up like that so that you can have two screens and keep one on radar. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, actually, I will do it for you just so that you can see. So what you want to do is your first screen... You're going to go windowed and pick whatever size you want. And I will keep these settings. And then what I will do is I will summon out my merchant ship on the quartermaster. And this is probably still too big. So what I'm going to do, uh, this is as small as I can go. So, what I'm going to do then, because I do this on another screen, I just throw it up on my other, on my side screen, so it works, it works okay that way for me. So what, if you only have one screen and you need to do this, what you're going to do, I'm trying to keep it configured to one screen, you're going to put your captain on the wheel. And then you're going to put your alt on the radar. And then as you drive on this screen and you've overlaid it on top. See, there's the Anoan. The Anoan's back now. As you're driving, you actually have a mobile radar that you can see your own radar. I know it's a stupid little trick most people uh probably have figured it out, but I have met people who've told me that they're alt tabbing between between screens. Uh, so just keep this in mind. This is how you can keep your radar up and then occasionally you have to mess around with it as it goes out to the ocean. But truthfully, you should be sticking ashore. 
Okay, so we've covered keeping owner's markup and keeping a alt or friend on the radar. Now, the, other th the next thing you need to know is you need to know the busy times for pirates and green pirates. There are better times of day to run packs if you're going to bring them in by merchant ship. Uh, mainly, if you want to try to avoid the bulk of the seafaring population, times like Kraken, uh, Luska's Abyssal, those are better times because a bulk of the population is at an event. Now, I'm not, notice what I said. I said better time. I didn't say safe time. There are deliberately people out there who pirate during those times because they know that's when they're going to get people who are trying to run a merchant ship. Uh, but you need to know when the time, the green pirates on your server are. Here's a good trick. If you do get green pirated, uh, keep a list of all the names of the people who were there when you got pirated. Go ahead and put them on your friends list. And then just try to keep a track of when that group of people comes on. Usually you can get away with running packs if you know when the biggest one or two groups of green pirates are. So just knowing when they're on and shifting your trade run can help increase your success, uh, success chance. So the last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about picking the best spot on the docks. And the best spot isn't always the closest spot. Now, for some reason, everybody is just fixated with coming into this side of the dock. And they all want to try to use this ramp. Well, the problem is, is this area is the bigger and more open of the two areas. Now, I will say that this side has a little bit of a fail safe, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. But everyone wants to go flush to the side of the stairs. Well, the truth is, you're setting yourself up to be pulled out, because if everybody does the same thing, the people who are going to pull you out are really practiced at pulling you out of that spot. So, what you can easily do is come over to this side, and if you start to get attacked, you actually have options. People can be offloading your boat and jumping up these stairs. This side, if you're going to get pulled out wide, this side has the advantage that the old trader spot is somewhere that you can get nestled into and make it almost impossible to get you pulled out. So if you're getting pulled out this way, you want to just keep fighting for this dock slip. And what happens is you want to just everything in your power to get yourself fought into here. And once you get yourself in this dock slip, it is nearly impossible to get you out. So if you manage to break free and you just keep fighting yourself into this spot. Now it does get hard. And as you can see, it's not the easiest thing to do when you're not being pulled. But if you can fight your way into this dock, once you're in here, once you're in here and I'm getting frustrated because I haven't done this in a while. There we go. But once you're in here, I'm going to show you the easiest trick. Uh, so now you're nice and safe. You got your other friendly person with you. Your guildmate who came because you were in trouble. That guildmate, all they have to do is pop their galleon. Once they, once they back it up a little bit, and they run up here and they do this. I mean, you're you're in there. They drop the anchor. Now all they have to do, all they have to do is come back here, sit on the wheel. You're not getting that merchant ship out. So. Realize these slips if you're on a server that you've lost a lot of you've lost a lot of ships You've lost a lot of cargo ships Maybe you want to play it safe and you want to just offload here onto haulers and bring them around Not a bad idea if you can't afford to lose uh, everything. I am gonna pause real quick I'm gonna go around to the other side Now this side of the dock has certain advantages because the ramp right here allows for 
quick unloading up and down the ramp if you're going to offload into a hauler. Uh, so this side does have advantages. I also, as I showed you when we pushed that Anoan out to sea, it spawned back in here. One advantage of having the Anoans in here is that they do become a pain for uh, you, because I'm having to push this one out of the way, but they also start to become a pain for the people trying to steal your ship. Because what I'm doing now is I'm brute forcing my way in here, and I've effectively used the Anoan to cover half my ship. So anyone trying to pull me out is going to be contending with this Anoan. And the harder I push in, the more I've spun that Anoan. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but rewind if you have to. So what I've done is I've actually forced my way inside here. I've turned that Anoan, and now, of course, if I had to, I could pop my galleon and block my friendly merchant in. So... I'm going to go over those techniques again in a second, but those are all the things about picking the right spots on the dock and why you need to know which spot you're going into. The last one is over here on this ocean trader, and I don't know how many times a week I see this. Somebody goes out and they spend the, the time and the effort and the energy, and they uh, get their merchant ship and they bring it right here because it's easy offload. And then they lose their merchant ship because they get it straight pulled out. Now, look behind you. There is nothing to work with here. If you're sitting right here with your merchant, it's a straight shot to that island to uh, beat your merchant ship. They don't even have to take any... They don't even need to take any crime points. They just throw your ship up on the, ocean, on the, on the rocks or on the sand and it's done. But right here, there's another one of those little coves. It's not as good as the other one. But I'm going to show you back here, there is another one that is really nice and tight and you slide your ship up in here. Now I know what you're saying, you're saying Jalan, but I'm so far away from the trader. Yeah, well, that's why you have to consider your risk versus uh, your time. If you've gone through the effort to bring in a ship full of sunken cargo, but you've lost two of the last four, then why not park down here, and in just a second I'm going to show you some more some more tricks. But park down there, and then all you have to do is summon a hauler right here off this rock, bring it right here, and offload. I mean, you're talking, what we're, we can click on the guy. We are talking, a clicker who can't click. Come on. Uh, I think I was clicked on it. Haha. Ha. Let's see. We are talking not even 100 meters. Look at that. We are talking 81 meters to the person, but to almost guarantee your safety. That's just food for thought. Take it for what you will. Now, at some point, you are going to get your ship boarded, especially in harbor. It is so easy to steal ships out of the harbor. I... Yes, I will admit, I have stolen green ships. I do that when I know they're red alts. I know they're red alts because they're in the same family as red mains. So I have no problem with pulling your green alt out of harbor and taking your packs. So it's going to happen to you. The biggest thing is don't panic. Just say to yourself, my packs are lost. Now I have to get them back. If you panic, you're going to start making stupid, silly mistakes, and that doesn't help you. We are much better as people. We are programmed to want to be on the offensive. So, don't panic, and now you have to steal those packs back. That's the mindset I want you to have. If you do get attacked, you have to call for help early. Rapid response team from Andrews, get them moving. You have got to give the reinforcements a chance to stop what they're doing and get there. Just good example yesterday. Person called for help after their ship was already pulled out to Pirate Island or to the prison island. There's nothing I can do then. You're already at the edge of Solus territory. I get maybe two or three seconds to try to help you and then your ship is in the open water. 
and then I have to I have to defend myself against six people. That um that's ju I just can't do that. Had I gotten called a minute earlier when that ship was still in close to the docks, I would have had a chance to actually do something. Now my advice is to keep a harpooned fit at all times. I'm going to show you on my ship, but some people try to argue with me and they're like, but I can fit an extra pack. Well, you can, but I recommend keeping a harpoon fit at all times because there are tons of places along the trip, along the route where you can harpoon yourself to a wall and that's it. Good game. They're not pulling you off the wall. So what I mean by this is on the side of the merchant ship, you see that there is a harpoon. Now you can make these and they're really cheap. Now once I get in close to where I'm aiming, I just simply I just simply harpoon myself to the wall and I uh, pull myself in. And I'm basically A, this is a whole lot easier for docking and maneuvering than trying to mess around. But here's the thing. I'm I'm on the wall. They're not they're not pulling me off this wall. If they're going to pull me, they're going to pull forever. Okay, so as I was saying about the harpoon before I was hunting down some green pirates, if you if you have to keep that extra pack, then keep the harpoon on you. So, what I want to what I want to refer to that as is I'm going to pop this I'm going to pop this merchant ship back out. And guys, I don't know why some of you feel the need that you absolutely positively have to maximize 22 packs every time uh, because this is just a simple insurance policy but what I'm gonna do is if I pull this off so I now have a crest cube in that left hand slot so the first thing I want to do is I want to turn in the pack on my back and then I want to pull the pack out of there and then I want to do the quick swap I'm going to quickly swap out and I want to put the harpoon in there because it just gives my allies options with trying to help me. As you saw before, if I'm getting pulled around, then my ally can jump up here. He can jump up onto the ship and he can anchor to the wall, but also more importantly, he can anchor to the floor and a lot of people don't think about this one and this really really helps you change the dynamic of the direction of your ship if you're getting pulled like you literally pull yourself to the floor and you can actually buy yourself a lot of time it's very very hard very very difficult to pull a ship now what you want to make sure you don't do is pull yourself hard over Never ever ever pull yourself hard over because then your sh sails end up underwater and the captain of the ship has no maneuverability. So, keep the harpoon on you. It just gives you options. So, how to help a ship in trouble. Now, I run into this all the time as well. People will not know what the hell they're doing trying to help a ship that's getting pushed and pulled and they end up helping the they end up helping the, the green pirates so what you want to do is and obviously I don't have a whole crew of green pirates to help produce this video and have this pushing and pulling all different directions but a lot of people think that the solution is to just hard ram it in and even here keep pushing it back into the harbor but you have to block it in. Remember, the owner of the ship is going to be able to maneuver. So what I'm going to watch a lot of people do is they're going to just straight broadside T-bone this merchant ship and think it's going to help. The problem is, is that you're making it impossible for your friendly ally to maneuver. You're basically overpowering their maneuverability. So if you can't be on voice comms, then what you want to do is you want to block it in. So I'm not going to T-bone this. I'm going to fishtail it. So it's pointed into the it's pointed into the wall, which isn't really helping it. So now I'm going to help this captain get some maneuverability 
But now I'm going to stop and I'm blocking. I'm keeping anything that's trying to pull this out from pulling it out. Meanwhile, I've just released that merchant ship from being facing into the wall. So when I spun it, I gave the captain of the merchant ship options to start pulling back. Now, I'm doing this by myself, so you can see. I'm slot see, I talked about earlier that in Owen, if I got this one little chance, this one little chance of freedom, of maneuverability, then what I want to do is I want to push myself into the back of the harbor. I also need to multitask, which is why not panicking helps. You'll see my harpoon is currently on the outside. What I want to do is I want to get that bad boy on the inside. Because now, once I get in here, somebody can grab hold and can anchor me in. Now, meanwhile, since I'm doing this by myself, this galleon would want to keep coming in, keep blocking. Now, in this case, you see I did a hard spin. I've blocked the merchant in again. I'm blocking. I'm not hard ramming. If I keep hard ramming, I'm taking control of the merchant ship away from the merchant ship captain. Now at this point, probably pretty safe. There is a little bit of an angle right here, but I can just keep maneuvering myself. And obviously, hopefully, the merchant ship captain keeps maneuvering. See, the merchant ship captain is now stuck on the Anoan, but that's good. Because once the merchant ship captain says, okay, I'm good... Here's the point that you would be able to start pulling off packs. And that's the most important thing. If you don't have a galleon. Well, let's go from the top. You saw the galleon. Keep pushing back into the harbor, but block it in. A simple push is not enough. It needs to be a push and a block. Getting it pushed up against the wall, that's much better than pushing it all the way to the back of the harbor, but not having any control. If two people show up and they don't have a cart and you'll notice at the bottom a cart is better but if they don't have a galleon and they don't have a cart then they can clipper and use the harpoon on the clipper to pull enemy ships over if only one person shows up start trying to put down anchors on galleons and start putting up sails on the ships pulling the friendly ship now if you have a friend show up or a guildie show up Immediately pop a hauler and start to offload packs. Now, where this merchant is right now, I'm going to hope and assume that the merchant captain has an alt on there and it's anchored. Right now, the best thing I can do for my friend, the absolute best thing I could do, would be to pop this, back it all the way up, and then hot, hot pass as many packs as I could just getting them off because if say there's 22 on here if i can get nine of the 22 off then that's not a total loss for the ship captain uh if it's a total clusterfuck if it is a total cluster i recommend simply telling your buddy hey i'm gonna go get you a shadow merchant and what you do is you quick 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 as you can get up here Come to the general merchant. Right there is the shadow daru. Pop that. Bring it down to the ship. And get all the packs turned in. Nothing will frustrate green pirates more than if you pop a shadow merchant and you get all the packs turned in. Now you do have to be within range of... You do have to be within range of the trade outlet. So that is one thing you do want to keep forcing your way in. Always be trying to force your way closer. This is not close enough at the moment, so you'd have to get closer. But those are just some of the ways to help a ship. Like like I said, don't just start banging into a friendly ship if you don't know what you're doing. You will do more harm than good. If you really don't know what the hell you're doing, pop a galleon out into the middle and just get in the way of the enemy ships. And the last thing I can tell you, and the most important thing, is practice. Just have practice drills. Have practice drills, having one or two of your guild members just harass a guild member's ship while they're trying to offload. 
And the reason why I say that is you're never going to learn how to respond to a threat if you never practice until you're under threat. Just seriously, if you're a guild that does a lot of trade runs with merchant ships, assign two to four people to pull out clippers and try to pull that merchant ship out. And tell them that there's a reward for doing it because people will people will try much harder if they're going to get something from it. Tell them if you can get me out of harbor, I'll give you 20% of the packs. Because that means you're going to feel more uh, incentive to not get your, your merchant ship pulled out. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to pull merchant ships out. That's something that you can learn on your own. You can just sit in the harbor long enough and you'll see people do that. But I don't want to make a video teaching people how to be green pirates. I think that goes against the entire spirit of uh, what I've done with Archage 101. But practice, don't panic, and remember, it's better to plan ahead and prevent being hijacked than it is to deal with being hijacked. Now, the next topic is an important one. And honestly, it is becoming harder and harder for me to convince people that they can catch up in Archage. And I did this video because I was thinking that, oh, yeah, I can give people a realistic dollar amount, a realistic gold amount, and they'll be able to get caught up. That's not the purpose of this video. Yes, I know the dollar amount I'm about to talk about is an astronomical amount of gold for a new player. I can't change that. I've done videos on making gold. You have to figure out how to make gold. But uh, I want to show you why there is a... Uh, certain reason to buy your gear versus regrade your gear. So now what I've done here is on a particular day, I pulled the price of a Divine T1 set with an Ethereum belt and bracers and a Divine T1 weapon. And that's the total that I came up with. 31,200 gold to get you in a Divine T1 set with a Divine T1 weapon. That's a lot of gold. That th That's a ridiculous amount of gold. Now, I know people are saying, well, it's cheaper than ever before. Well, that may be true. And yes, a year and a half ago, a Divine T One Piece might run 8K. And before that, they were 11K. But 31,000 gold for a new player. Now, I'm going to be realistic. And I'm going to say that you should be able to make... 300 gold a day now i know some of you are like how do i make 300 gold a day i'm gonna say that if you followed my guides and you're doing everything i've taught you to make gold you should be making 300 a day but if i take 31,200 and i divide it by 300 that's 104 days that's over three months to get into a divine t1 set and a Divine T1 set is crap. It's it's trash. It's not going to help you in open world PvP. So that's three months. Now on the other side, you're saying, well, that's 1,397. That's for grand. That's for green gear. That's just to buy it. Get the pieces. So I know what you're saying. You're like, come on, Jay. I got to be able to regrade my stuff for cheaper than that. Well, let's find out. Now, before we can even regrade... We're going to need regrade materials. Now, I've gone all the way through the storyboard production and I've realized I have made a slight miscalculation on the materials. Yes, I realized to go from Grand to Divine would only be six weapon regrade scrolls. I actually factored in seven. And then, of course, it would be 42 armor regrade scrolls, blah, blah, blah. L let's just roll with it so I don't have to spend another day redoing the math. But I, I am acknowledging there is a slight flaw in the math. But in the end, it's really not going to make a difference because this is to prove a point. So I had my 1,397 uh, gold in order to buy just the flat items. And I'm going to spend another 2,248 gold to buy all the materials I need. Now notice what's not up there is there's no regrade charms up there either. This is assuming, assuming that you could go straight shot every single piece, straight shot, no fails, you would need 2,248 gold. Now, I know what you're saying. I don't really need lucky sun points. True, you don't. But if you're going to regrade at Unique to uh, 
try to get divines, you might as well use the lucky sun point because eventually you'll get lucky and get a double proc. So that math together, about 3.6k gold. Now, sure, if I take off the the eight too many scrolls, we could take this down to 3,500. Still pretty cheap, right? You're like, Jay, you just said 31,000 for a divine set, 3,600, I can get my stuff to divine. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so I haven't even talked about regrade freeze yet. Every time you regrade something, you pay a fee. Whether or not it is successful or it fails. Now, I'm sorry, I don't have the gold income to completely do this scientifically and show you exactly what each step costs. I don't make enough through my donations through Patreon to buy enough Apex to do this. I don't get enough gold donations in game to do this. And I already have an Epic set, so I'm not going to go back through and, and divine out a set. I would love to. I just don't have that kind of uh, that kind of resource. So I don't have a chart that tells you what each step is going to cost, and I can't find one either. I can find some ones with spotched in data. So what I can show you is, like a T1 weapon, what your celestial attempt to go divine is 258 gold for one try. So the celestial chess piece is 128 gold for one try. So and then the boots and fists I just happen to have some data on. So, regrade fees. Let's just say it takes 500 for the weapon. Because after all, we're living in fantasy land and you're going straight shot to divine on everything. 400 for the chest and the legs. And 300 for the other five pieces. So, you know, if we, got, uh, we got ourselves 3,600 gold. Plus that previous 3,600 gold. We're at like 6,600 gold, and you're like, Jay, 6,600 gold versus 31,000. No wonder why you need to make so much money. You waste it all. Yeah, right. Like, you're getting all this stuff in straight shot. Uh, let, let me introduce you to some RNG. So here's the regrade success chart. And we're talking Obsidian, so we're in this column. And yeah, we can go one for two in Raid or Arcane. And there's going to be people that will tell you that they've spent nine scrolls going from rare to arcane. Like, I've spent nine scrolls going rare to arcane. Uh, arcane to heroic is 32%, so it should take three scrolls. Yeah, right. Uh, heroic to unique. Yeah, right. Unique to celestial. Yeah, 22%. No. And then celestial to divine, 20%. No. But that's what they say it is. So, just by math. Just mathing this, I'm going to say it's going to take one weapon scroll to go from Grand to Rare. And 50%, I'm going to say it's going to take two. And then Arcane to Heroic, Heroic to Unique is going to be three each. Unique to Celestial is going to be five. And Celestial to Divine is going to be five. And then the same thing with the armor scrolls. So this is just this number times seven, seven armor pieces. Now I know what's starting to go through the back of your head. You're like, Wait a minute. This is starting to add up a little bit. Yeah, it is. So, we're going to go 19 weapon regrade scrolls. Now, this one is correct. And 133 armor regrade scrolls. 5 lucky sun points. 35 lucky moon points. And when we add all this up, we get 9,480 gold in materials to regrade. Plus our original 1,397, we're at 10,000 gold. And again, you're going to say, Jay, 10,000 gold versus 31,000 gold. Yeah, regrade fees. We haven't factored them in. 21,000 gold in estimated regrade fees. Remember that Celestial 258 gold per attempt? We have to assume five attempts from Celestial to Divine. That's 12, almost 1,300 gold for just one step, for one piece. So now let's add up the damage. When I add up this 21,000, and I add it to this 10,000, and I add all the little digits, just assuming that I got everything by the numbers, it would cost me 32,477, Plus or minus that little bit of uh, 
mistake I made, but I did correct it, so that number is accurate. 32,477 gold for a, a, a temps to get a divine set, or I could buy the divine set for 31,000 gold. Now, I already hear the question coming. Uh, I've totally disregarded breaking and starting over. Now, what do I mean by that? When I get to this step right here, when I, when I try to roll a Celestial, one of three things is going to happen. It's going to go Divine. It's going to downgrade back to Arcane, and I have to start over from this step. So I'm looking at 5, 8, 11 Weapon Scrolls or 11 Armor Scrolls. And all those regrade fees. Or it's going to break completely and I have to start all the way over. Including buying the piece of armor again. Regrading is a horrible nightmare. Now I know what you're going to say. But Jay, I could do it during a regrade event and I wouldn't have breakage. Yeah, ask any professional regrader what they feel about going Celestial to Divine during regrade events. And yeah, they say the number goes up. And most of us will tell you that... That's a load of crap because I did an entire chest full of Celestials. An entire 50 slot chest full of Celestials. Zero Divines. Zero for 50. But the success rate is 20%. So out of 50, you would have assumed I'd get 10. I got zero. Now, that's what said I am never regrading again. I don't regrade. I YOLO stuff for fun. I never assume I'm going to get a piece from regrading. So I didn't even factor in any of the breakages, any of the regrades. That 32,000, this 32,477 to get your own divine set, I promise you. Jalan promises you that that number could easily hit 60,000 and you won't even see it coming. So personally, take all your lucky moon points, all your lucky sun points, all of your armor scrolls, all that stuff that you accumulate, sell it. Let the professionals do the professional regrading. Also, again, I didn't factor in charms. I didn't factor in a single charm in any of this. That 32,000 is raw, no charms. That number is going to go up to easily 75, 80K. You start factoring in a charm on every attempt. You start getting into superior reds and superior yellows. That adds 1,000 onto each attempt at Celestial. So I know what you're going to say. But I could get an epic. Yeah, you could get an epic. You might. People get them all the time. But I'm going to be honest. I'm going to show you my gear. My gear, I made all of my pieces because I did, right? No, I didn't. I took all of my pieces to T6. I bought all of my epic pieces. Uh... I take that back. My chest piece did go to my chest piece went epic. Uh, my shield legendary that was I was rolling for a dungeon weapon that went legendary. My club that went legendary years ago before the nerfed uh, rates and the increased cost. And my instruments legendary I bought it at legendary. I don't even play with the RNG game and I make enough money to do it. Now Am I trying to steer, steer you away from the RNG game, the regrade game? Yes, I am, because you're a new player. If you're a veteran player, you, you know, you already know this stuff. So you can argue with me in the comments below. But the truth of the matter is, for a new player, you are going to far easier raise that 31,000 gold than you're going to be able to overcome the RNG game. And that's it, guys. That's it for today. That's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about saving a ship, and I wanted to talk about uh, I want to talk about buying or regrading. Now, if you do lose a ship, I highly recommend that you record your footage. You should have OBS up, or you should be using Nvidia Shadow Play. I don't know what the Razer version is, if there is one. You should always record when you're losing a ship, so you can John Madden it afterwards. You can look at it. What could I have done better? If you do lose a ship, upload the footage to YouTube. Send me a link. And I'll help you go over like what things you could have done better. And if you have any other advice for new players on either regrading or on saving ships, I'd love to see those comments below. Hey, you. Yes, you. Yeah, yeah, you. I'm talking to you. Hit that subscribe button. Watch a couple of more videos. Go check out our website.